Hey, welcome back in, everybody, to the Sports Fanatic Sports Case as we gave you some great NBA and NHL coverage rounding out the season, saying who your top contenders are for the championship or the Stanley Cup, respectively, and who your heart trophy for the NHL or for the NBA, keeping it simple, calling it the MVP, uh, will win the award. Um, now we're going to go into the NFL and the NFL draft, specifically looking at some mock drafts. Um, Andrew has one up from Chris. Uh Chris uh, Trapasso, T-R-A-P-A-S-S-O. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Okay. That, well, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't. If he's watching, you can message me, Chris. I doubt it, but uh, <laughs> you you can tell me how we pronounce your name. This guy, I know for a fact, he's a best one of the best in the biz. Uh, I would be shocked if he watches anybody's YouTube channels, let alone mine. But uh, I have Daniel Jeremiah, so <laughs> put mock draft up, who tends to know insides of teams. And oddly enough, Dave Zingaro is a funny story on him. Short when I was watching the Eagles podcast, said he actually got in trouble one time where he'll actually get calls from teams saying, "What the hell are you doing? You're letting all the goods out there." And he'll be like, "I honestly was just guessing. Like I know stuff from the inside of your organization. I was just putting two and two together, and I but now you just told me I was right. So thanks for that." <laughs> um, but but uh, yeah, that's kind of how it goes down. That's how good uh, Jeremiah is. Chris is somebody I read. Uh, he was the guy I think I actually used for the first episode. We did the mock draft with Steele. So he's also a good one to go off of. But uh, we'll get going with the first pick. I have a feeling most people are not going to disagree uh, when it comes yeah. to the first pick here. Uh, Trevor Lawrence is not going to change at the top. If you have anybody that's comparable to Patrick Mahomes, um, him, that could just do it all. Uh, so there's not many people you would ever say, yeah, we just saw a world talent come out. There's another guy that might do that. Like, not not many times do you see that. He's clearly the number one. I'm sure he has him as number one to Jacksonville also. Absolutely. Yeah, and then you also agree that he's clearly the number one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no one yeah. can take if- if Jaguars don't take Trevor Lawrence, uh, they'll, they'll have a new GM shortly, I think. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> true. And we're just going to go for the mocks. We'll go over the top ten, and then we're Eagles fans. Steel, who runs the site, the Don of SteelFlyers.com, if you will, um, to use a mob analogy. Um, but uh, he's uh, he's someone that, uh, you know, getting into my uh, mob uh, movie vibes late at night. But anyway. Um, he's somebody that's into the Steelers, so we'll go down and say who he has projected, who's around their pick, who they could pick maybe around their pick, not somebody that either of these two have projected, who they have still there. But uh, we'll move into the top 10 now. Second, most people, we'll see if uh, Daniel and Chris are matched up. Most people, because of his scouting combine, um, physical, and just how well he scored and all that, think Zach Wilson is almost a lock. To the Jets at this point um, with the second overall pick since they traded Sam Donald away now to the Carolina Panthers. Um, it seems like he would be a lock for the Jets at number two coming out of BYU. Good passer there. Also athletic himself. Nothing close to Lawrence, but nobody is him. But he's a good, he probably have one of the better arms in the draft, definitely, and it can also move and slide the pocket. Uh, you think uh, Wilson will probably go to the Jets, right? And then um, if you had any thoughts about him, um, what your thought process is there when it comes to him. Yeah, um, so this mock draft agrees. It has Zach Wilson at number two. I disagree with it. If I was the Jets, I'd be taking uh, Justin Fields here uh, is who I would take in my personal opinion. Uh, I don't know if you disagree with me on that one or not, but I think Fields is the second best quarterback in this draft. The uh, CBS here has, has him ranked at third for the positional ranked. Sixth uh, prospect rank for Justin Fields, Zach Wilson, second and second in that category. So, obviously, a lot of people disagree with me, but that's that's what usually happens. But, uh, I uh, no, I think uh, – I don't think you can go wrong with Zach Wilson because I think he's going to be a top three pick because I think 49ers are going to look for a quarterback as well. But, uh, no, I'd go Fields, but, yes, this is Wilson as well. Yeah, I think it's going to be one of those two. You're getting the more Deshaun Watson type if you go Justin Fields, which is a great quarterback. You're getting more of a potential better version of Baker in Wilson yes. uh, if you go Wilson. Um, so it depends what your team's offense is rooted around. Do you want more of a game manager that has a little bit more tools than Baker potentially in Wilson, or do you want a guy that – 
can kind of open up and pizzazz the playbook like Deshaun's able to do, which yeah. is similar to Justin Wilson. Now, Daniel Jeremiah has the 49ers going real boring here. Um, okay. He has them trading up for third. It's a surprise pick, but in terms of someone that you just think would match with Jimmy G, less athleticism but pocket passer, Danny has him going with Mac all the way up at three. I've Mac been hearing that a lot. At out from Alabama to the 49ers. It makes sense because of Jimmy Harbaugh. I've always envisioned him as more of a give me a guy that can just air out and throw the ball, then I need this guy to be the most athletic dude. Now he of course had hot Kaepernick, but that just fell into his like that just fell into his lap and work. Then he had Smith who could slide a bit, but was more known for his passing ability. That worked out. Jimmy Garoppolo wins when he's in, so he does well with him when he's actually healthy. Um as a quarterback that's more of a pantser that uses some athleticism. So it makes sense because it's just the difference is you don't have like Smith and Jimmy G could slide. Mac Jones is literally the definition of a pocket passer. Like you don't like he can slide the pocket, obviously moving the pocket side to side, but in terms of running and getting out of the pocket, he's pretty much paid a man. So like, you're like, like he's literally the definition of a, pocket passer so you're going you need to know you have the right offense built around him if you're drafting mac jones otherwise you're just taking a guy that's literally your prototypical old school quarterback that's just going to throw and get it done with his receivers if you don't have the right receivers what the hell would you take (laughs) true um no i think uh so my what who so he's Mac Jones? I have Justin Fields on my mock draft. I'm gonna agree with your guy Daniel there. I think Mac Jones will be the third pick in this draft. Uh, so I think my boy Justin Fields is gonna continue to fall here, and I think uh, it's gonna be interesting who picks him up where. We'll obviously get into that shortly, but I think uh, I, I think it's gonna be interesting where this draft goes because I think again outside that number one, I think you're gonna be able to might be able to see a lot of crazy different things that happen here. Uh, in the in the near future for this draft, and I'm excited. Draft's a week away from when we're recording today. Actually, I think about a week from now, almost exactly. Yeah, I think it the draft will be uh, kicking Thursday, off Thursday. Actually, yeah. So, so yeah, it be a week. Uh, it's exciting, but we'll see where it's at. Do you want me to let you know where they have Mac on mine, or just wait till we get to him? Oh, uh, we can just wait. If we, okay. if it, unless if he's out of the top ten, then you can let me know by the time uh, okay. we get out of the top ten. But. Tyler. For him, yeah, they got it makes sense to me because of Harbaugh, so it does make sense for me for Mac Jones to go there. It might be his best chance to do well. I've seen him on other mocks um, decide to maybe if he can get to the Bears, the Bears have ever team or trade up from potentially the Bears were a team because the one mock draft literally opened with the Bears cannot be serious having Andy Dalton as their starting quarterback. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, the Bears could be a team um, when it comes to him. Now, Daniel's got four quarterbacks. He's got it being a quarterback frenzy early on here. Um, he has the Atlanta Falcons deciding that Matt Ryan's too old for school. Okay. Um, and go now that might not be true because obviously Aaron Rodgers is still the quarterback of the Green Bay and they picked Jordan Love. But uh, at four, they have them getting Trey Lance, North Dakota State product, athletic quarterback with a great strong arm, um, going to get more accurate as time goes on. Didn't play last year, though, but um, use a guy that's hard to pass on when your franchise QB. That's basically what Jeremiah said, which is true. It's 36 and hasn't been himself as much recently. So I wouldn't be surprised. Do I think it's the utmost thing the Falcons should strive for if they want to actually win in the next couple of years? No, they need line help on both ends. They need defensive help more than they need offensive help. But if they want to just say we want to have our future quarterback now since this is a stack quarterback draft next year, not so much, then that would make some sense. Depends how much they think they have left in Matty Ice. Yeah, no, you bring up a great point. I'm going to say uh, I disagree with Daniel. I don't think they should get a quarterback. I also don't think they will get a quarterback. I understand where Matt Ryan is, but I think they're in a position where you have a lot of talent on that team still. I understand they're fourth pick, but that offense could go off if you – Give them the right they thing. They should get C-Well or Slater in my eyes because that could help. I, I, I'm going to disagree with the second one. I agree with C-Well from Oregon. I think if he, I think he could be the pick there. Or well, I actually agree with my guy Chris here uh, and what he has here, and that is Kyle Pitts. I think. 
I think a tight end there, and with the way Pitts is and how good he can be, I mean, imagine if your your tight end is Pitts with Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley line up on the outside, uh, other side of the, of those of a, of a Pitts. I mean, I think this, I think that can make this team really dangerous there, and I don't hate that pick. I, I think this pick for the Falcons should be Pitts or Sewell. I yeah, guess. I understand drafting a quarterback because, like you said, Matt Ryan hasn't been himself. He's 36, but he has been still fairly pretty good overall when he's got the time, when he's got guys healthy. So I think if you add only add to his weapons, whether it's a Seawell, give him more time, or if it's a Pitts, just add another guy. I mean, think about when he had um, – who was the big tight end they had a few years ago when he almost had the MVP season? I mean, Tony Gonzalez. Well, Tony Gonzalez was a while ago, but I'm talking about oh. his MVP. It's close Hooper? to when he was. Was it Hooper? It might have been. Uh, I'm blanking on who it was, but like that's when last time we saw Matt Ryan really be that excelled quarterback when they went to the Super Bowl. Against, I don't think Tony Gonzalez was there when they went to the Super Bowl. Um, or at least it wasn't the Tony Gonzalez he was used to be. It was somebody else. Uh, maybe Tony Gonzalez was the second guy. But I, I think a Pitts pick here would be pretty nice. Or you see well for them. So Chris has Pitts here. I'm going to agree with Chris on this one. And I think they're going to take Kyle Pitts. Yeah, that was Austin Hooper because he played with the Falcons from 16 through 19, and it's now in Cleveland. Okay. So, yeah, that was Austin Hooper. And then, if I mean, I'll let you announce the pick here at five, but if Pitts is the one taken by Atlanta, I think that sets up a really easy pick for Cincinnati. Um. Yeah, if Pitts is taken by Atlanta, that would. Otherwise, I think they're picking him <laughs> because he's been mocked to them a lot, too, for Joe Burrow. Uh, they used to have a tight end that people thought was going to be great receiver as tight end in uh, Tyler Eifert, um, who then just kept getting injured um, his entire career and never really panned out. Pitch is big, and that receiver type tight end with actually the body build to maybe be able to withstand the NFL longer, you would think. So I feel like he'll go to the Bengals if he doesn't go to the Falcons. But yeah, I, I agree with you. The Falcons, it would make sense um, to go with. Um, what you said, but I could see them going with linemen just from the. They don't go with pits. I could see them just because they do need help there too. And Matt Ryan is slow as molasses um, at this point of his career. So you would want to block for him. Um, so it's either going to be pits or I would say Sewell maybe. And then maybe Slater, who some people think is better than Sewell. It depends who you talk to. So. We'll have to see when it comes down to uh, offensive linemen here listening to different things. I can tell Ruben Frank really likes Slater um, from listening to the Eagles podcast. Okay. So um, it seems like he's a pretty good option there for people that can go kind of anywhere when it comes to this. Because it depends how many quarterbacks go in the top seven. I mean, you might have three guys or four guys if you pick that are not quarterback. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that all depends, too. But at five, they do have him. Going to pitch, even though, or do have pitch going to the Bengals, excuse me, because uh, even though this draft is deep in the trenches and the Bengals need that help, his argument is they have plenty of time to get guys in the second or third round with how deep this draft is on both lines. If you can get Kyle Pitts and he falls to you, you should get Kyle Pitts if you're Cincinnati. Okay. I, I really like Sewell for this pick for Cincinnati. I think, um, I, again, I don't know if Pitts is going to be there. We'll see. I can't. I that's this draft could shake out because of uh Atlanta. Like Atlanta could really decide this draft um in many different ways. Just depend what they do, whether they trade it and allow someone else to get the quarterback they want, whether they take a quarterback, whether they take a tight end, whether they take the the Sewell. But for Cincinnati, I really like Sewell here. I, I think the most important thing here is you need to protect Burrow. Because here's the thing, you're right. You you, you can draft whoever you want in the sense of. Uh, adding weapons, or you can add another offensive line in this third or fourth round, but who's more likely to pan out, Sewell or that guy you get in the third round? I really like Sewell. He's going to be the real deal. Whether it's uh, Sewell or it's Slater, like you already mentioned, I think that really has to be one of their two pick series because I think one of the most important things is you need Joe Burrow healthy. And if you – we already know he got hurt once, so if he gets hurt again because of a, a bad offensive line, you, you, could be, you could lose him before you even get weapons. So – uh, I, I think my pick here would be C. Well, that's who uh, Chris has as well. So uh, we'll see what happens. But if I had to rank them just by likelihood, my first rank for them would be C. Well, just because I think Pitts might go to Atlanta. Um, if he falls, granted, I would also be talking to my quarterback more than I think most GMs do. 
Um, or at least I can yeah. credit for doing. Um, but if Burrow wants Pitts, I'm picking Pitts. If he says get me no matter what in the first round O line help, then I'm picking Sewell. I don't care if Kyle Pitts is there because I'm doing what my future franchise, who we hope is a legend. Well, not why I don't know about we, but who Bengals fans hope is a legend. I hope he's a legend. I like Joe Burrow, but I'm talking about we're not fans of the Bengals. Bengals fans hope is a legend and actually becomes a good guy. I'm listening to him. That's why when we get to the Eagles, you're here who my favorite guy is for them to pick due to, I don't think Church is going to be a legend, but just due to our quarterback um, wanting him and talking about talking him up in the past. Um, but we'll get to that later. Um, with the sixth pick, this is the Miami Dolphins killing my hopes and dreams. Um, it has the Miami Dolphins taking LSU wide receiver, um, Jamar Chase, who was obviously a very good wide receiver. Um, you can run him through the middle. You can run him outside. Uh, he has a chance to immediately make an impact as other rookies you've seen, like you mentioned Ridley, how Cooper came into the league and just immediately uh, was a good player. Dez, if we want to go way back, was a terrible human being at times, but was, was a good uh, football player. Um, so, uh, Jamar Chase is good on both sides. Great dude. Great football player. So, <laughs> uh, good, combi- good combination there. Uh, they got him going to the Dolphins. I'm not sure. Does he have it differently for the Dolphins here? Nope. I got Jamar Chase on my board as well, or my board, Chris's board as well, is Jamar Chase, which I disagree with. I would not go Jamar Chase here. Um, but I think that's who they're going to go with. I do believe that. I, I think this kind of goes to what you were saying about letting your quarterback help pick. And if you ask Tua, may, why not pair him up with a guy he, he kind of played with at the same college in, in a Jalen Waddle or Devontae Smith? And I understand people are scared of Smith's size, and we continue to hear that, but I think Smith's a real deal. And uh, I don't know. I kind of like not necessarily a better prospect, but I'm big on chemistry. And maybe they view him that much higher than those guys, but I don't see a huge difference between Chase and Waddle and Smith, as I think they all can be top tier guys. So I, I would lean towards Smith here for this pick if I was picking for the Dolphins. Just because, again, chemistry, I think, goes a long way with some of these guys, especially to a, a young guy making a name for himself, trying to make a name for himself in this league. But again, I don't think you can go wrong with Jamar Chase. So that's who I got as well. I don't think you can go wrong with any wide receiver. That, though, that is a good point, though. That is chemistry, which is the point I was going to make when we got to the Eagles. So that is a valid point. They could go either route. I think when it comes to receiver, um, you're not going to make a mistake there if you're the Dolphins, unless if you go down for the fourth wide receiver and pull a Howie Roseman and decide to draft somebody that nobody's expecting. Um, so as long as you don't do that, um, then you'll be fine. So, yeah, I think yeah. that's a good assessment uh, for them. Now, Detroit is weird. <laughs> this could be a trade spot, as Daniel Jeremiah says, because they already have Jared Goff. Obviously, Justin Fields is more upside, no kidding. Then uh, Jared Goff. Um, but that's going to set up an interesting dilemma <laughs> for the yeah. Detroit Lions. Um, will they go quarterback here? That's what he has. Deandre Meyer still has them going. Justin Fields getting a single call because he has more upside than Goff. It's going to call go into a frenzy here of what you're going to do with Jared Goff. Then maybe that'll make him spark to prove himself more, knowing he really has to show it because he has a guy right on his buns there out there. But then you'll be able to get trade bait for him. But you're going to have to hope that works out to perfection if you're the Detroit Lions and you take a quarterback. Otherwise, you're just stuck with Jared Goff. And uh, you have Fields, where the reason this pick, I wouldn't even be surprised if people are saying they might still pick a quarterback, is because of Howie Roseman. (laughs) Because he decided to take Jalen Hurts uh, when they still had Carson Wentz, and now everybody's going... Well, they have Jared Goff, but he sucked lately. So, therefore, they could still pick such and such, even though he sucked lately and was decent a couple years ago. So, if this team could get him back, they probably won't need the quarterback they pick anyway. Uh, But uh, I think that's kind of – that might be why that's projected, just simply because of what Howie did. (laughs) Yeah. So, my guy, Chris, here got – he projects some trades, and this is one of the trades he's projecting. He's got the Denver Broncos trading up to pick seven, swapping. I don't know. It doesn't have full details, but the Lions moved back to nine at that point. But he has the Denver Broncos now selecting at seven, taking Trey Lance, quarterback from North Dakota State. 
uh, as the third quarterback off the board here, or excuse me, fourth quarterback off the board over Mac Jones. Here's my issue with this, and you let me know if, if, what you think about it. My issue is if you're Denver and you're looking at Trey Lance, and maybe this is to your point, you don't know what these guys are going with, but you already you think the Lions have Goff and the Panthers just traded for Sam Darnold. So don't you think you can get Trey at nine anyway? I don't know. Maybe you can't. If, if, if the draft, yeah, if the draft became how it is here, if the draft becomes how Daniel projects it, he has them going to the Falcons. So it would depend how the draft. Like you said, it's probably all going to lie in Atlanta's pocket here, potentially. Yeah. So I'm just saying, based on mine here, like if that is Trey Lance is there at seven, and they're going to sit here. I don't know. I, I don't see the point of. I don't. And maybe it's only two picks, seven and nine. So maybe you're not giving up that much. But it, depending on what it is, I don't know why you try to move up those two spots because I'd expect the Lions to go elsewhere if quarterback in the You normally well. do give up more yeah. if you're getting a quarterback, though, because I was listening to the Eagles podcast, too, and they brought that up. When you trade up for a quarterback, you tend to get more yeah. where you saw um, the trade um, to trade all the way up for a quarterback. In the past, guys tend to get more where when the Eagles traded – uh, back and they swapped out the pick there. You know that's not for a quarterback because they already have yeah. a quarterback, so they didn't get as much as a trade for a quarterback. So it's going to be interesting to see in those a couple spots if they know it's because you're getting a quarterback. That's the most key position. The Lions are probably going to ask for more from you. Exactly. If they don't know that you're getting a quarterback and they just don't have any uh, realm of that, then they might you might be able to get it for cheaper. But I agree with you. If he falls there, I don't think he's getting picked. I I, I could see. This whole thing with Jeremiah saying he has more potential. Yeah, no kidding. I agree. Justin Fields is more. I like Jared Goff out of college, too, but he's not as good as I thought. Yeah. So, yeah, Justin Fields is more potential than a former Cal product, Jared Goff. But I don't see them picking him. Nor do I think they should since they have Jared Goff. They should worry about uh, building things around. If they end up staying at seven, get Goff protection. <laughs> well, the Lions still did not have the best protection. For yeah, Teddy. or you can go with a wide receiver because they're going to need help. Uh, wide receivers wise, right? You could do that too. Yeah, yeah. They're going to need help in a He's, lot of spots. See, either you're going to have no blocking and be able to tell that guy get open in the first five seconds, um, or you have better blocking but not as good receivers. Yeah. yeah. So that's, we'll that's what's going to come down to for the Lions. Yeah, it's going to be okay. I know you're a rookie, but I'm going to need you to get open along with Kenny over here in the first about two tenths of a second of a play. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to die. Yeah. So. If you are the Lions, and, and that's why if I'm the Lions, I don't even know if I'd do that because you know the Panthers are going to be looking towards that O-lineman maybe or, or a wide receiver, to be honest, as well, which is two spots you're going to be looking at. So I don't even know if I'm the Lions if I want to trade back two spots because then you're giving Carolina the pick of uh, Jamar Ch- I mean, again, we don't you know he's going to be there with his first receiver. So you're going to be giving the Panthers the choice of Slater or Jamar Chase or Devontae Smith. But maybe if you're Detroit, you're sitting there with, okay, well, we're okay with any one of those three guys, so we'll let Carolina pick. And we'll we'll make the pick off base to who they get. So maybe you're okay with that. You, you get extra value for whatever. Probably I don't know if you're moving up two spots there. You think what third, fourth round pick you probably get probably. for that. So you add an extra value in a third round pick if you're good at drafting because third rounders can be valuable. And then again, obviously you're picking still getting the guy you want at nine. So there is some value there as well. Uh, and we'll we'll get to who they have at nine for the Lions here in a little bit. Yeah, well, for this one, having the Panthers at eight, like I said, depending on who you rank between Slater and Sewell, um, he has Sewell, or excuse me, Slater going before Sewell uh, as the eighth overall pick to the Carolina Panthers um, as the Northwestern O tackle. And then keeping the ninth pick, said Penny Sewell is who on this one would be going to uh, the Denver Broncos to then protect who you would think would still be Drew Locke at the current. Yeah, I think pick eight's fairly easy for whoever's there. Because I think this pick, probably for the Panthers, is going to be whatever O-lineman was not taken by. Uh, So here, I got Slater at eight, and I agree with it. I think that's who the Panthers have to take. Yeah, well, in this one, neither's taken. So it's really whoever the heck they want. Because Sewell, um, like I said, in uh, this one, um, with Daniel Jeremiah, has him going ninth. Well, you had the proposed trade, but this has him going ninth to the Broncos, which I think is a no-brainer, too, because we saw, could they pick a quarterback? Yes, because Locke really fell off in his second year. But we saw him come in and throw six touchdowns to two interceptions initially when the team as a whole blocked better, played better. And then last year, because of injuries and what have you, everything just turned into a complete spiral down a mountain. 
uh, yeah. for the Denver Broncos. So if you can get some help for him, you could, as a, the Broncos, try to go one more year, see what you have. Everybody's – not everybody, but a decent amount of players have had sophomore slumps in their career. See what he's able to do in his third season and then go from there. Or there's also quarterbacks um, like Mudd and others that are you can pick in the second round that uh, people um, like. So there's there's guys like that, like the Jalen Hurts of last year. Um, there's guys like that in this year's draft um, who you could pick as well if you want to get a quarterback later. I would think these two picks, both of these teams need line help. Panthers at eight, Broncos at nine. If you go with Slater or Sewell, both of them are there for my board. Other teams should go with the other. Who did you have for the trade, though? Because you had the trade uh, at nine, changing the pick up from the Lions instead of the Broncos. Yes, yeah, so I picked nine. I have the Detroit Lions taking – uh, Jalen Waddle at number nine. So they this has them looking at a wide receiver. And on the lines, it actually tells you what they get back from the Broncos. So here he's got Detroit gets a fourth and a sixth round pick uh, in this year's draft. for, And then obviously the pick swap for that pick seven. So that's what they did. And then they settled for, at this point, you have the options of Jalen Waddle, Devontae Smith. This is also surprising to me. I take Smith over Waddle, but the Lions select, according to Chris, Waddle over Smith. Okay, yeah. Um, trying to think whether you should look Waddle or Smith because Smith is the shorter. Speed. I mean, Waddle has a lot of speed. Smith's the kind of guy that will remind you a little bit of receivers he's had in the past uh, when it comes to Robert Woods and like the smaller guys of the world that Goff's taken advantage of. So yeah, that that is interesting. Um, but yeah. yeah, either way, either way, it's a good pick. I think for either way. This is a pick I'm going to detest with all my heart and soul. Um, if he, hopefully, his concussions are good for this guy, Quiddy Payne, coming from Michigan. We wish him well coming into the NFL. Um, I don't hope he goes to the Cowboys. Uh, but with this 10th uh, selection, they have edge rusher Quiddy Payne from Michigan okay. um, teaming up with Demarcus Lawrence to go to the Cowboys to form potentially one of the bigger duos. So that would not be fun for me, but, you know, it is what it is. So for my 10th pick, I got trade number two happening here in the first round. The Dallas Cowboys trade back to, I think it would be about 15 or 16, with the New England Patriots who move up to number 10 and draft their Mac future Jones. quarterback in Mac Jones. I figured that had to be Mac Jones. As soon as you said the Patriots trading up for a quarterback, I was like, that's Mac Jones. Yeah. So, interesting trade there. I, I found the Cowboys. I don't know. You got some options here that they really need. So, that would be a picky one. Yeah, but, but this also moves back to what you said. If Mac falls this far, who's picking him? Like, if you're the Patriots and you're trading all the way up, unless if the Giants just say, screw Daniel Jones and go with a completely different Jones, um, who, who's in all honesty, I'd say I, I'd say the Eagles. In all honesty, if they're really, if what they said yesterday was really about, oh, we're still an open quarterback competition. We've heard them rumored to, to be looking at some quarterbacks. You could be looking at the, I, I mean, because you're to your point, none of these guys would you think. So you got the Cowboys, probably not. Giants, probably not. Eagles, we would hope probably not. Chargers, without not. question, not. Yeah. And then this team, I could see maybe uh, if they're giving up on Kirk Cousins, the Vikings are at 14. Obviously, fans haven't been really happy with them. I, yeah, this I hasn't getting Jalen Phillips the edge. I don't really hate Kirk Cousins as much as a lot of other people do, but um, I, I'd say probably the Vikings would be the biggest one. And you could trade 15 to 14, to be honest. It's not that big. Um, but hey, I, if the Cowboys still got this guy at 15, who they have. I could see them making that trade. This has not getting Patrick Sertan at 15. So if he actually falls that low to him, I mean, that's a steal for the Cowboys. No, that is completely true. Um, in this draft, just because they're in the division, I'll say who the 11th pick is uh, for our Eagles fans that tune in. Uh, they have the Giants taking Alabama receiver Jalen Waddle. And I also forgot Kenny Galladay's not on the uh, Lions anymore because he also signed uh, with the Giants. Yeah. Are you thinking about uh, my bad. I yeah, I was, yeah, I was thinking of Marvin Jones. Yeah. Um, but here's my thing, real quick. I also have Devontae Smith at 11. I don't get that pick, though. Like, I, trust me, I think Devontae Smith's going to be fantastic. If I said here a couple times, already. but you have Kenny Galladay, you have Darius Slayton, and you have Sterling Shepard. And I get it. You want as many weapons as possible, but 
Am I wrong in saying the Giants got other needs before that? Maybe I No, am. they do. No, they do. They, but, have, they have other needs before that. One listen, of them I, I'd be terrified the Eagles secondary facing those four receivers if they actually did. And Devontae Smith, Kenny Galladay, Darius Slayton, and Sterling Shepard. I'd be terrified. Don't get me wrong. But I just feel like like if you're the Giants, is their linebacker situation good? Like I feel like Mika Parsons here for the Giants. I can't think of their linebacker situation. I don't think it's anything special. I could be wrong. Sorry, Giants fans, if I am wrong. But – I don't know. I'm looking at Mika Parsons here if I'm the Giants. Yeah, you could get Parsons. This draft actually hasn't gone all the way down to the Patriots at 15. Um, but, yeah, you could get Parsons if you're the Giants. Uh, come right out down the turnpike into New York, a uh, former Penn State product, um, and go to the Giants. If he doesn't go there, I don't think now, even if he falls to us, um, like this is another thing they brought up on the podcast, Parsons would be the Eagles' primary because – they signed Eric Wilson. They have Singleton for this year. Ruben Frank discussed it. They went from all of a sudden having struggle in corner or cornerback, struggling uh-huh. linebacker core to all of a sudden now being like, at least for one season, that's not too bad. So if you want to worry about it next draft, you can. But this has the Eagles getting Serpon. I'm perfectly fine with that. If I they 100% fine with that. As a cornerback, I think he's the best corner. Or J.C. Horn, who's Joe's Horn's son. Either of those two corners I like. Uh, South Carolina's J.C. Alabama is Patrick. Um, but I'm saying chemistry-wise, I'm going with it here. Jalen Waddle. Um, they asked Hertz back when he was um, – I forget when it was, a couple months ago, but like who he thought was the best receiver in the draft. And he specifically said, I think Jalen Waddle was like, – I can't remember the exact quote, but the most talented and basically the best. So but that's pretty much without directly saying, I want to work with said person. Yeah. I want to work with said person. So if I'm the Eagles, I said this in the last one, I love Patrick Sertan. He's my favorite defensive player in the draft. Then it's Joe Horn's son, JC. And then you have Farley, who didn't play injury risk. You have to see what you have in Caleb Farley. But plus some off the field, but that's different. Uh, Waddle's a guy, you know what you're going to get, has maybe the most peak potential out of the guys. But, you know, he's already has the chemistry with Hurts. I feel like if you're co- when your quarterback kind of tells you to do something and you don't do it, if he's a guy you're actually going to try out for this year, if that's the route you're going, you're just stupid. That's always just been the way I've looked at it uh, from a football organization. If your quarterback's basically straight out saying, this is what I need, and you just say, eh, he's there, but let's just pick a uh, – like, for example, if they go off the boards, this is Howie Roseman, if he's like, let's pick Joe Mia Wazu – Karamoa, and you'd be like, we already have enough linebackers, and you didn't pick the best one. Like yeah. you left Mika Parsons on the board. No offense to him; he's good from Notre Dame, but he's not Mika Parsons. Um, so, like, you need to do what's right here. You can pick Sertan, pick Sertan if you want to pick him. If Waddle's not there, but if Waddle's there, you should or Horn if he's there, but you should pick Waddle if he's there because your quarterback basically told you he's my guy. <laughs> No, no, you're not wrong. Uh, I mean, I think I'm okay with the wide receiver at this pick, obviously. Uh, my draft board here, and, and Chris, he's going to be taking Mika Parsons at pick number 12 uh, to stack that linebacker situation at this point. I would not hate that pick as well. I think he's going to be a, a nice, good player here. So I think for this, for the Eagles, it's got to be one of Patrick Sertan, Mika Parsons, or the best wide receiver available. Well, the, yeah, I could it, also. It better be. It better be one of those three. Yeah. It better be one of those three. Like, you can't overthink it. It's not hard. Please, I beg you, Hallie Roseman, do not mess this up. If he overthinks Mika, it, he'll probably pick Jalen Phillips. That's just Mika, what, Mika, Par- Mika Parsons, Patrick Sertan, or let's say probably Waddle or Smith. Yeah, Waddle or Smith, whoever falls. My thing is I'm just going to go with Waddle first and foremost if my quarterback basically tells me something. That would just be my cardinal rule as a, as a GM. Like, if anybody got insight that the quarterback wants something specifically and you don't tell it to me, that's your first strike for getting fired. Okay. Uh, because, because, like, I want to know everything that's going on between what the key guys want. I'm not one of those guys that go, well, it's just, all that matters is what I want. It's like, no, that's stupid. It's a team for a reason, Howie Roseman listen to your team and listen to your scouts like you've never done before in your life. Right. Um, But we can go now um, to 
Steel's team has a round out with the Steelers, who they project to have here as we have to scroll all the way down to the bottom here as the Steelers at 24th. Um, That's your three as good as the Steelers? <laughs> yeah. This one has the – some people have the Steelers picking a running back here if they want to pick a running back at the bottom of the first because obviously they have Connor and then some concerns there. But uh, other people have them picking an O-line, which would make more sense to me because they Jeremiah hinted at how deep this uh, – Draft is bottom first round guys might end up being top first round talent when it comes to lines. Mm. Uh, this guy went to your former school, so I'm going to let you talk on him. Um, because I don't honestly know barely anything about uh, Tevin Jenkins. But they got uh, the Steelers picking Tevin Jenkins out of Oklahoma State. Okay. that's. I'm surprised to see him going that high. But no, he's he was a fantastic player. I definitely could definitely want him to be able to pick there. And I think it's an exciting uh, spot to hopefully see him go. Uh, I think he's he benefits well from, especially that Steelers team, will be able to, to um, identify a lot with these guys. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, I don't know, I would love that pick for him. I, they already got one of my boys, Mason Rudolph, and we'll see if he ever uh, pans out there with that team. But I think... Uh, Oh, it looks like we just had uh, the thing freeze up uh, on us right now uh, as Andrew's uh, picture froze up here as we're rounding out our NFL talk. Um, but when it comes to the Steelers, um, as a way for his picture to come back, uh, Jason Owa um, from the Penn State would be another team uh, I would envision potentially being able to go there uh you can get jason owa maybe for the pittsburgh steelers there um asante samuel jr to 